I'm Ash Huggett, and you're listening to the Strong by Ash podcast, where we talk all things fitness, business, and lifestyle. What's up, guys? Welcome back to a new episode, and actually, a little bit of surprise because I wasn't going to plan to record today, but I received a little bit of an upgrade with the audio uh, audio equipment. Uh, I realized last week that the cables had broken. Uh, I was pretty devo, so got online and I bought a new um, Rodecaster Pro mixer. So I'm hoping that the audio sounds so much better now. But um, anyway, so this is why exactly I was going to record today. I thought I'd throw it out before I go on holidays for the next couple of days. But um, look, this is not about my excitement for this episode. This episode was designed uh, to do, I actually was going to do this the next couple of days. But um, the top... My top 10 tips to tracking consistently. Now, I know that tracking your macros is definitely not for everyone. And especially for people that have never tracked before can be extremely overwhelming. Um, I can definitely vouch for the girls who are a part of my Strong by Ash program. Um, a lot of them had started off not tracking before. Um, and at the beginning, it is extremely overwhelming. But uh, over time, you know, with education, you know, it starts to come become a little bit clearer. Um, but then also in saying that the macros, I mean, it, like I said, it's not for everyone. Um, but ultimately, it is the, the best way to lose body fat um, because we are measuring uh, our caloric intake data. Um, you know, there are other ways to do it, but this is probably the most efficient way to drop body fat. Um, or we're looking to, to to put on muscle and eat in a calorie surplus. So um, that's what we're going to be talking about today because I have been, for me, I've been dieting now for the good part of seven months on my way to uh, preparing for a competition in the end of October. So I like to think that I know my way around a macro or two. Um, since January, we're now, what are we now in July? So since January, um, I've lost almost 15 kilos um i know for the people who are watching i'm starting to lose my face and uh, i'm starting to get really really skinny now on my way to prep so um look macros tracking macros macronutrients are your protein fats and carbohydrates um and with the, the amount of time that i've been able to coach and the thousands of people that i have coached um over the last 10 years um of coaching nutrition uh, I've come up with a couple of tips that I've found that's worked well with my experience with, with myself, but then also for my clients too. So um, I'm hoping that you guys or girls, whoever's watching and listening out on the podcast uh, is going to be able to take away at least one thing um, from this and I hope it can help. All right, number 10. We're going to start off with 10. Um, on my fitness power, you want to use the correct data. So if you enter it in, enter in the product of what you're eating on my fitness power you may find that there's going to be a lot of different um, types of calorie content for a certain food and you might not know which one is the correct one because my fitness power is like wikipedia and anyone can add anything in so calories can be incorrect uh, you might even find that there'll be a calorie content of the product of, this, of whatever you're consuming but if you type it tap it into it there is no macros no protein, fats, or carbs set in there, and then, um, you know it could be incorrect data. So there are um, other databases that you can use. Um, one is called Nuttab, N U double T A B, and then there's also Calorie King. So uh, you can search them up on the websites, but then also you can you can search them in uh, My Fitness Power, and if you were to write whatever the food w it was, and then also write the Calorie King or Nuttab afterwards and you might be able to find something in there um, they are pretty good resources when it comes to um, verifying the actual data uh, of the macronutrient content so i would look at doing that searching that in um, and that can really help you especially there are a lot of foods that will be definitely incorrect so um, there is always is even though it's on the label there's going to be 20 percent error on there too for what the what the you know what is actually in the contents of the food you're going to consume as opposed to the label so always uh, know that number two 
uh, there's a common question that I get as a coach. Uh, it is, should I be tracking raw or cooked? So this is referring to the, you know, to the meats. Now, you can track either raw or cooked. It doesn't really matter, but you need to make sure that you're tracking what you're actually you're going to be cooking um, or, or weighing. You need to make sure that you're tracking that. So if you're going to track raw chicken, then you need to measure raw chicken. You can't do the opposite. You can't be going in uh, on my fitness power and tracking raw chicken, but then you're going to cook it and then you're going to weigh it out as raw because then you're going to get a little bit of incorrect data. Um, so then number number eight, put your container on the scale rather than the plate of the bowl. Now this is kind of referring to if you have any type of um, sauces or you know spreads. So one of my go-tos lately is the Biscoff spread. So instead of having, you know, like for me, I'll have my Biscoff in a bowl of oats. So I will put the, the jar of Biscoff on the scales and press zero. And then I'm going to take out the required amount that I need and put that into my oats. That way then, because as you, you um, and take out the spread or the sauce, it can, it's going to be on the spoon as well. So if I was to do it the opposite way where I was put the bowl down and I put my oats down and then I try and get my Biscoff spread that's not being tracked at the moment and then try and get a spoon, I dish it out and then I try and put it onto my bowl, there's still going to be a certain amount that's going to be on the spoon and I can guarantee you, you would not be putting that in the dishwasher without sucking that spoon. So always make sure that you have like the jar, um, the bottle or whatever the container is, put that on the scales and then measure that as you're taking it out of the jar. That way then you're gonna get correct data there. Okay, uh, number, where are we at? I've just done the, the numbers incorrectly here. Um, number, well, I'm gonna go back up. This is not gonna be uh, accurate with my numbers. Number six, seven. 10, 9, 8, 7. It's number seven. Don't track later. Track before you go out or as you go. The worst thing you can do is tracking your food at the end of the day of what you consume um, throughout the day. There's a great chance that you're going to be over your daily calories or you could be extremely under your calories and you have a lot more room that you need to eat. And it could be at the end of the day where you're not sure with what else you can have just to fill up those calories. Or you may find that you are, you know, extremely over your calories and you don't know what to do with, with you know, being over your calories. So a great thing to do is um, if you're not planning ahead is, is trying to track as you're going to be able to keep planning out for the rest of the day. Okay, number six, um, plan ahead for the week. So a great little thing that I do um, with my consistency, and I found that really, really um, easy to follow, is by planning out my macros for the week ahead. So, you know, we'll go shopping on the weekend, and I'm sure like a lot of people uh, do. So you want to spend some time, and look, it's not going to take too long. And the more that you do this, the quicker you're going to get. But if you can sit down on my fitness power and start to enter in your foods of what you're going to be wanting for the entire week, that way then you're going to come up with a bit of a meal plan as well. And then once you've done that, you've planned out your macros for the week ahead. And then there's no more guessing or thinking what you're going to have um, because you've planned it out for the week ahead. So make sure we do that. All right, number five, um, the skeleton template. This is one that I've been following for many, many years now and I've found really good success from it. Um, and I've used this with a lot of clients who have really, really enjoyed this one too. So the skeleton template, I should claim that. I should put a copyright on that one. Basically, for me, I eat, I'm a creature of habit. So I will eat similar things on Monday to Friday. Now, I what I'll do is kind of reverting back to planning ahead for the week. I will have the same breakfast, I will have the same lunch, and I'll have the same snacks. But my dinner will be different. So what I'll do is when I'm planning for the week ahead, I'll make sure that I enter in my breakfast in my fitness pal, then I'll enter in my lunch, then I'll enter in my snacks. Then I'll actually, I'll also enter in my dessert. So once I've done that, I've entered my template of food that I'm gonna be having every day. I will go into the edit section once I've entered that in, 
select it all, and then I'm going to copy and paste it to the following day and then paste it again for the next weekdays because that's kind of how I, how I operate. So I'm basically play, put, pasting my template Monday to Friday. Then from there, my dinners are changing. So I'll go back into my fitness power and on the Monday, I'm going to be able to enter in what I'm having for dinner. And I could be having, um, well, lately I've been having chicken schnitzel and mashed potato. So I enter in all the ingredients of my chicken schnitzel and my mashed potato. Then what I'll do is I'll adjust the macros of my dinner to hit my, um, my daily intake for the day of what I need. That way then I know exactly how close I can be with hitting my macros. Then I'm going to go on to Tuesday and I'm going to put in my Tuesday night's dinner. Once I've entered that in, I'm then going to adjust my dinner portions so I'm hitting my daily macros again. Then I'm going to go into Wednesday. I'm going to enter in my Wednesday dinner and so forth, Thursday and Friday. But that way then, I already know exactly what I'm going to be eating for the entire week. I know that I'm going to be nailing my macros for the week. And there's now no more guesswork. I don't need to follow, um, think about and during the day and go, well, what am I going to have tonight or what am I going to have today to try and hit my macros? And I found that doing it like this has, found, has been really, really consistent with myself and also a lot of my clients. Because they're preparing beforehand and they're just setting themselves up for the easiest way possible. So I know it can be difficult though if you're, you know, if you want to eat things that are different and look, that's, that's going to be fine. It may be harder for you because you're eating a lot of different foods. So it's going to be a lot of, um, a lot of maintenance that you're going to have to be entering in my fitness power. But I've definitely found that to be really, really easy is that if you are eating certain foods every single day, then enter that into my fitness power and then plan around that. All right, the next one. If there's something that you actually can't live without or you know it's one of your favorite foods that you want to have every single day, then put that into my fitness power for the first thing. So this could be you know something that's could be high in calories and let's say example this could be chocolate. And you can't go without having you know like a small bag of Maltesers. So you're going to enter that into my fitness power at the start. Then you're going to be able to plan the rest of your day around those Maltesers so then you are reaching your macros. So look, don't take uh, advantage of this and think that, you know, all your food has to be made up of shit because that's not what I'm advertising here or promoting is that, but if you're having some sort of treat or something that you, you know, really, really enjoy, then definitely look at don't taking it out of your daily regime, have that in, but then you can plan around, you plan your macros around that as well. And I found that to be really easy. So then you know, you're, you're getting the best of both worlds. You'll be able to hit your macros, plus you'll be able to eat the food of what you're after each day. All righty. Number, what is in this next one? Okay. If there's, uh, if you're eating out, this is a good one. So if you're eating out, I would rather overestimate my calorie content of what I'm going to eat than I'm going to underestimate. You have to remember that when you go out, People are going to, you know, at the restaurants, they're not interested in how many calories that you need to eat. What are your macros, your fat loss goals, you know, if you're looking to gain muscle as well. They're after the best tasting foods for their business and so then you're, you have the enjoyment. So they're going um, to have a lot of flavor. They're going to have the oils. They'll have the butters in there too. So you need to prepare for that. If possible, you want to, you know, if you are dieting, then you would ask for, look, can I have the, you know, can I have the steak, but there's no oil and cooked in no butter um, and any sauces, can I have that on the side? That's going to be probably the easiest option for you when eating out. But make sure that you're overestimating than underestimating because there's going to be a lot of hidden calories that they're putting in for that taste factor but obviously it's not going to be helping you with your body composition goals. So definitely overestimate, you know, you might want to put in uh, two to three tablespoons of olive oil. Um, you might want to have, um, you know, there could be, if you, you may be having like a burger um, and you might need to enter in the bread uh, and there could be different options there. You know, I would look at whatever the, the bread or the bun option, I would look for the higher end of calories um, because then I'm overestimating and then I'm, you know, I know that I'm going to be somewhat on track. All right. The next one kind of ties in to that eating out is that if you are eating out, then make sure when you are tracking what you're eating, 
you're going to break it down individually. So let's say, you know, a bacon and egg roll. You're not going to go on MyFitnessPal and write a bacon and egg roll because it's going to be completely different. You don't know what the bacon is. You don't know how big the eggs are, how many eggs there are, you know, what type of bread it is. Uh, there's just a lot of different factors on there. Is there going to have sauce on there? Is there not going to have any sauce on there? So you need to kind of like break it down. Um, you know, there could be different things on there too. So you would look at on my fitness power, you look on track. Okay, so I'm going to be having a milk bun. So I would enter in milk bun. Um, and I'm, you know, it could be um, medium cut bacon and you could be having two eggs. So you're breaking it down. But then also don't forget that like I mentioned, the last one is that you know they could be cooking in oil. So making sure that you're make, you're breaking it down, saying that's the bun, it's the bacon, it's the eggs, um, but then also like two tablespoons of olive oil as well. Because again, you're overestimating, but you're also breaking it down individually, and that way then you're going to get a better understanding, um, and you're going to get closer to your calorie content, what you need to eat each day, than opposed to kind of blindfolding yourself and just choosing any bacon egg roll. All right, um, and the last one, number one, when comparing foods for the best are going to be for your, uh, so it's good. when comparing foods are going to be best for your macros, and you're going to be at the supermarket and you're looking at them both, don't compare them both by the serving size because one could be a serving size could be a 25 grams, the other serving size could be 30 grams, and because the serving size look is smaller, the macros could be lower. But in fact, if we were to compare them both by 100 grams, you may find the one that you were originally going to choose could be a lot higher with your macros and your calories. So always look at the 100 gram serving or the 100 mil serving and see which one's going to be best suited for your macros um, for your entire day. Um, that is something that they can really trick you with that is just changing the serving size, especially with the marketing on the front of the package. They might say, they might say it's high in protein when in fact, when you're looking at the comparisons of something, you might find something else that's actually higher in protein. They just think it's higher in protein for their actual small serving size. So um, that's always a good hack to look at as well. So that's really it. Look, I hope that you guys uh, made something out of this. Um, and if you really enjoyed this episode, then I appreciate you uh, for supporting us and also listening out to the podcast. Um, make sure that you do share the story, share it out on your stories. Um, or if you think this is going to, help someone um, with tracking their macros, then please share that out to them too. So until then, I'll speak to you guys later. Thanks for listening. Bye.